Hello, everybody. DCU, sorry. DCU went through an incorporation process in 2016, which transformed the educational landscape across the north side of Dublin. Four separate entities came together, DCU, St. Patrick's College Drumcondra, Matterday Institute of Education, and Church of Ireland College of Education. This process has resulted in a new Institute of Education and brought together all the humanities and social science disciplines at DCU, St. Patrick's College and Matterday Institute in an enlarged faculty of humanities and social sciences. From a library perspective, incorporation has involved four distinct academic libraries becoming one DCU library service with libraries on two campuses the O'Reilly Library at the Glasnevin campus and the Cregan Library at St. Patrick's campus. As you can imagine, integrating four libraries into two has been a hugely complex process that has impacted on all aspects of library services. Today, our lightning talk will present an insight from the systems department and the collections department into one specific project, the creation of a new request collection. We will outline the many different steps it took to actually create the new collection and will demonstrate the multifaceted and collaborative nature of the project. Becoming one DCU library has been an extremely challenging but rewarding process. We have had to physically create one library collection, which involved ingesting material that, had, that was already on our database from Matterday Institute the migration of bibliographic data of the CICE material into the DCU LMS, the physical relocation and integration of whole library collections, and the creation of one library catalogue to reflect the new DCU library collections. We not only needed to create one library collection, but also one library service. We wanted to ensure that the library user received an equivalent experience on either campus. Prior to incorporation, DCU, St. Pat's and Matterday shared an LMS. So the systems department has spent oh, at least the last decade making sure that all the rules in the LMS, that the three libraries were very, very separate. So therefore, we needed to reconfigure nearly every element of the LMS to enable harmonization of services. For example, to allow students to borrow across campuses and to bring in line rules around borrowing and loan periods. So why did we need to set up a request collection? Incorporation brought with it a major conundrum, and that was space. During the summer of 2017, DCU teaching and research print collections grew by almost 50%. And so in order to create one DCU library collection, four main lending collections needed to be integrated into two libraries. To facilitate such a huge increase in printed material, we set out to, to create a new request collection. So just focusing on the monographs for a moment, in the space of a few months, DCU collection went from approximately 11,500 linear meters up to 19,000 linear meters. So how the systems department prepared for this? In order to prepare for the creation of a new request collection, the first thing the systems department needed to do was provide the usage statistics for material already in the O'Reilly and Cregan Library and the material pre previously located in Matterday. This information allowed the subject librarian team to make informed decisions about what material could come off the open shelves and be re relocated to the request collection. Once decisions had been made about which items were to be relocated, either across campuses or to the request collection, we then set up a number of temporary workstations out on the library floors. This project gave us the opportunity to trial Capita's web-based LMS called Soprano. So for the first time, we were able to use our LMS while out on the shelves. And this proved to be a very efficient way of working. The creation of the request collection meant that all items in the O'Reilly Library and material from CICE and Matterday needed to be RFID tagged. Mary will talk more about this in a moment. But what that meant for the systems department was the opportunity to upgrade and install new access and self-issue technologies and equipment. I'll pass you over to Mary now.
Hi, everybody. Following on from Michaela, I'm going to provide you with an overview of work undertaken to achieve um, our desired outcomes, which was to have a new request collection space and service ready for the new academic year. Our timeline was from May to September. Sorry. Our timeline was from May to September, so we had to get the space up and running by September. So how did we do it? With a lot of advanced planning and consultation across the libraries to prepare for multiple projects that would be running simultaneously across both sites. Planning stages included identifying materials for relocation and identifying resources in terms of people we would require and the systems, IT systems and supports we might require as well. We set up teams of staff across both sites. Oh, sorry, there, there I am. This is my slide. Uh, we set up teams of staff across both sites. We had timetables and workflow processes worked out for each st stage of the project. We also needed to identify physical spaces for physical work, project work that we would be undertaking on the library floors, and also to relocate low-use books that were coming off the open shelves. Collaboration was a key factor in completing this project. I really cannot emphasize that enough. Without the support and participation of staff across the library departments, across and between sites, we wouldn't have got this project over the line in time for the new academic year. So this is what we did. In, remember, one of our challenges was to create an equivalent service across both library sites. To do this, then, it meant that in the O'Reilly Library, we had to RFID and um, relocate low-use materials simultaneously. Around the same time, we also had to move our short loan material from the ground floor to make space for a new special collec collections exhibition area that was being introduced in September. What I can say in relation to the O'Reilly Library is that every item on the open shelves was handled either to relocate or to RFID tag. Now, in the Cregan Library, we had to plan for the ingest of Matter Day and Church of Ireland main lending materials that were coming on to the open shelves. And for anything that was coming through to the open shelves, we had to make space for that. We also had to RFID this material that was coming into the collections and material that was being relocated had to be identified, created, and then shipped to the O'Reilly for inclusion in the new request collection. Now, all of these projects are building up steam and taking place across the two libraries in June, really, and July. So you might be wondering what's happened to the request collection that we were building. Now, don't be shocked. This is a slide from earlier on in the year. Uh, we had planned and hoped that this space would have been refurbished by June, but for various reasons, timelines had been extended. So the now revised completion date was set to the end of August, early September. Now here's a picture of what the space looked like around July. You can see it was still very much a work in progress. And at this stage, work on the library floors was very much ongoing in the O'Reilly Library and in the Cregan Library. Now here we are, yay, at the end of August. And we've actually got what our, the keys were handed over to library staff. So we had a new space, physical space, to host this material that was going into the request collection. Our challenge now was to reshelve and resequence every single item that was coming through. This for us meant resequencing and reshelving just under 80,000 items before the new term began in September. Now, I would say this was both a logistical challenge and a Dewey challenge. We had four separate sequences. Books were shelved and stored in various places across the libraries. All of these items had to be brought to the request collection area resequenced by Dewey number and put on the shelves in a single run, running from 0 0 0 to 9-9-9. These two slides coming up will give you just some idea of the scale of the work that was involved. Books were everywhere, on the floor, on desks, under desks, in crates, and some were still on shelves with tags identifying them for the request collection. I can honestly tell you we were all working out very much physically and mentally for those months over the summer. Now, by September 2017, in around three weeks, we had managed to create a new closed access request collection ready for use by our students. Now our main lending collections were available to borrow from the open shelves directly in the O'Reilly Library or the Cregan Library or else from the closed access request collection. 
we did set up a new fetch service um, that was mediated through the information desks across both sides to retrieve closed access items from the closed request collection. And I can report that this service has been actively used over the last academic year. We didn't really have any magic wand. Time was our deadline. It had to be done by September. And I can only reiterate that our success was purely due to the collaboration and huge effort of staff across all the libraries who worked so hard throughout the summer months. It was their efforts that kept us on target so that the new service was ready in time for the new academic year. I'd just like to close up by noting that we are all in all of our libraries dealing with living print collections that I believe can greatly enhance our own profiles on the national and international stage. However, these collections have to prove their worth and collection development decisions around retention and relegation are critical to streamlining these collections and adding value to them. These are issues I think in all our libraries we are all grappling with alongside the perennial issue of space and storage. We're delighted to be here today talking to you about this and we do look forward to hearing other libraries' experiences of managing same. Thank you.